Go with me in your Bible to the book of John. I want to pick up where I uh, left off last week, um, doing a weird thing in that I am um, preaching a passage in three sections, and today I want to give you the middle section, because um, I want us not to miss some truths and some principles about God. Let me tell you what I'm learning, and then we're going to review and then move to the text. I am learning that um, it is never too late with God. Yeah, I'm learning that. I'm learning that. I really, I really am learning that. And so today, I'm just going to give you my takeaway right now, because if I don't say anything else, I want you to hear me say, and, and as we're in the middle of this story of... Um, of Lazarus being raised from the dead, I want you to know that it is never too late with God, okay? I want y'all to know that. And um, I know I might say some things that's going to raise a lot of questions, but I want you to write them down, and on uh, Wednesday we're going to interact with it. So I'm going to be brief this morning because I want you all to capture what I'm going to say with you. So go to the book of John. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read up until where we're going to begin. I'm going to review the points that I shared with you. That's for those who were not here uh, last week. I'm going to encourage those of you that were not here to go on uh, to iTunes and download the podcast or subscribe to our podcast so you can get the message from last week. Um, it helped me tremendously. I'm hoping that it helped you. And then we're going to move forward so that God could move and have his way. So John chapter 11, let me read verses 1 all the way through 16. If you are there, say amen. amen. Okay, let me read. Then I'm going to pray. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Martha who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. I'm sorry, Mary, thank you, who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, him who you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness or sickness does not lead to death. It is for the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews are just now seeking to stone you. Don't miss that. Once again, um, let us go to Judea again. Verse 8, the disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews are just now seeking to stone you. We're just now seeking to stone you, and are you going there again? Verse 9, Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? And if anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. Verse 11 picks up by saying, After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I go to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, uh, come on, point to yourself, say, for my sake. Everybody got to say it again. Say, for my sake. Come on, one more time. Say, for my sake. Very, very important thing I don't want you to miss. He says, for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there. Man, if God or Jesus said that to me, I'd be ticked off. And he said, I did it so you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas, Thomas called a twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Let us pray. Now we're going to walk this out. Holy Spirit, you're wonderful God, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for who you are and what you're teaching us, Lord. We learned a lot last week about your sovereignty. And as we walk through this passage today, Lord, we want to learn even more about you and how you operate in the earth realm in trying to enable us to become like you. So we give you praise, we give you honor, we give you glory, God, that you may speak through me. Bring to remembrance the things that have been deposited. Extract from me what you want your people to hear, Lord, because you want us to become like you. The goal is to be like you 
and it's not about us. So open our hearts. I am praying that as the word goes forth, that someone here that came to be healed would receive healing. Somebody who came for salvation would receive salvation. Someone who came for clarity will get clarity. Someone who don't understand you would have a deeper understanding of who you are. Open our hearts, Lord, to receive, and we submit everything that's going to be said to you, that you may be glorified. It is in your name we pray and thank you. Amen and amen. So here is um, the big idea that I shared with you last week. I want us to kind of get this in the spirit and get that in our minds so we can kind of walk through this. And that is sometimes Jesus delays responding to our request for help so his intervention results in God's being glorified. I need to take a, a minute just to kind of elaborate on this because I want us to um, get this, is that sometimes God will be late on purpose. Yeah, he'll be late on, he'll be late on purpose. God will be late on purpose. Come turn to your neighbor real quick. Say, neighbor, God will be late on purpose. Okay, very, very important that you don't miss this, okay? So here's the thing that I want you to understand. God is always on... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I was sharing with the church Sunday, I don't like that. Um, you, can, you can be super spiritual all you want and act like you like it, and I don't, okay? I don't. I really, really don't. And I was sharing with son, uh, Wednesday the struggle for me with this message that I have to preach. Let me tell you why I don't like it. When I want him, I want him. Can we be honest this morning? I don't want him to say, I'm going through life, and life is difficult, and life is tough. And I'm like, okay, God, just show up when you want to. I'm going to stop the foolishness. No. When I need him, I, yeah, am I the only one, guys? Come on, I mean, when you broke and you're about, you're about to lose your home and you're about to lose everything that you work hard for, you don't want to, to be out on the street. You want solutions now. Come on. And so I, 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 that's cute, but, but when I want him, I want him, okay? So here's what we extracted from that. He is glorified when I learn the truth that we are on his time, not ours. So he gets glory out of that, right? Come on, come on, come on. Let's give him a hand praise. It's okay. He gets glory out of that. He gets glory out of that. But it's an extremely hard lesson for us to learn. So as we kind of walk through the text, we saw three sub-things that were very, very important to that. Number one, we discovered that a personal relationship with God has no impact on adjusting his time frame to ours. And here's what this sounded like last week. It doesn't matter how much you pray. It doesn't matter how spiritual you are. It doesn't matter how, much, how many times you fast. It doesn't matter how deep we get. We will never move God to change his mind about his plan to adjust to ours. Oh, I need two amens right there. Are you with me? We will never allow God to do that, get him to do that. And here's the second thing that we looked as it relates to that first point. The providence of God mandates that all our experiences work together for the good. And let me continue on of those who love him so that God can get the glory out of it. That means every single thing that you and I go through in life, God works it out for our good. Very, very important principle as I, I'm going to pick up what I'm going to talk out today, okay? Very, very important that we not miss that. And here's the other thing. So because of that, we need to seize the moment when God and when working with God so that we can be on mission with him. Here's what that means in a nutshell. When God shows up, it's in our best interest to join him in what he's doing and not spend time creating opportunities for him to do what we want done, okay? We work with God to do what God wants. And so here's the thing. He intentionally, gosh, I don't like that. He intentionally de delays his intervention to place this on his time frame. Man, 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 man. Here's what this sounds like that I'm going to move in today. The best lessons we can learn from God is usually after the fact. You guys all right with that? It's normally after the fact, right? So he delays his intervention so we can get what he is saying to us. So here's the, the second point. I said this sermon is going to be done into three parts. This is what I want you to take away today. He is glorified when we recognize Jesus as the resurrection and the life. Okay? Now, I'm going to move quick.
but I need to leave this on the screen for a little while because us deep people, if I were to ask every person in here, do you believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life, you will say to me, I do. And we will sound like we're going to see in a little while, like Martha in the text, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of the living God who came into the world. But I'm the guy that's going to say to you as we walk this text out, even though we believe that, we only believe it in an eschatological sense, and I'll explain what that means, but we don't believe that it really works right now. I like the quietness, because that means we're being Berean. You're like, hmm, okay. Talk for yourself, preacher. I believe that. No, you don't. Um, Because if we did, we won't behave the way we do. (laughs) We won't conduct ourselves the way we do. And more importantly, let me say it this way, we won't have the enemies that we currently have. If we believe that, okay? So I I want that to be a huge takeaway today that we understand that he is glorified when we recognize the truth that he is the resurrection and the life. Here's the sub-point to that that I want us to lock into. Number uh, 2A, time bears no factor on Jesus' ability to bring life, let me put, make it personal, to my dead situation. I'm going to talk carefully. Then read. This is the reason I need to do this in three parts. If that statement is true, that time bears no factor on Jesus' ability to bring life to my dead situation, it should not matter when he does it. <laughs> Can we talk this morning, guys? Can we talk this morning? Now, go to verse 17, and let's walk this out so we can see what's happening here. Then we're going to move through. I really believe there's a freeing word, and at least for me it was a freeing word as I kind of research and kind of walk this through this morning. Look at verse 17 through 19. Now, when Jesus came, okay, mind you, when he got message, he stayed two days where he was. The text picks up by saying when Jesus came from the ESV, he found that Lazarus has already been in the tomb for how long? Come on, y'all, that's paramount. He'd been in the tomb. The text says nothing about the fact that he's been dead for four days, but he's been in the tomb for four days. And verse 18, the author gives us some more pertinent details. He says, Bethany was near Jerusalem about two miles off, And then notice verse 19, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Now, here's some historical cultural data you need to be able to process what I'm going to share with you this morning. Palestine was a very hot climate and very hot um, culture or vicinity or region in the earth, if you will. So what would happen is that when a person died... Back in that day, and and sometimes even today, they didn't have morgues like we have today. They didn't have a vehicle to embalm and refrigerate bodies so the body can be preserved until the family came from Cincinnati to Denver four days later because they couldn't afford to just get next day flight. Are you tracking with me? So what would happen is the moment you were pronounced dead, the very next thing that happened is they would get you into the ground as soon as possible to eliminate the possibility of decomposition taking place in the body and the body deteriorating. For those of you that are biblical scholars, you'll remember with me in the book of Acts chapter 5, when Ananias and Sapphira died, notice what the text says, they took them outside and they buried them, what? Immediately. That was a cultural norm. That was a pattern. That was something that happened that when a person died, they took them into the ground as soon as possible. Here's the other thing that you need to know is that Jesus was probably about some 20 miles away at the time that he received word from Bethany that Lazarus was sick. It took one day for the, for the journey, for the message to get to where Jesus was, and when the message got there in that first day, the text pointedly said, Jesus took two more days where he was before he even returned. 
And then the text continues that he made his journey back, which gives us a total of four days. Now, I'm wondering, John, why do we need that level of detail to say that by the time he got there, he had been in the grave four days, which meant the moment he died, they buried him. Here's what you need to know that I find striking about the text. Not only was it a hot culture, but they had this this suspicion in the Jewish culture back in that day and age, and some commentators argue that it still persists today, that when the body died, when a person died, their spirit would immediately leave the body, but what would happen is, is the spirit would hover around the body for a period of three days in hopes that something would happen, that the spirit could reunite with the body again and a resurrection of sorts can take place. But now, this is what Jesus did, knowing the mindset of the Jewish people. I wish I had somebody in here. He said, hover, spirit, hover. Because when I show up, ain't nobody going to say, I didn't do, I wish I had somebody in here. I didn't do anything, so do what you need to do, because when I show up, too late shall be the cry. And what would happen is, on the fourth day, decomposition would set in and the figure, worms would start to take over the body. And so the spirit, at at the risk of entering into a decomposed body, would leave the earth realm and go to Sheol or the place of the dead and the body would be cremated. You remember with me, me, let me give this away. When Jesus and he said, roll the tomb away, listen to what Martha said, he's been dead for how long? Yeah, y'all know the story. And so listen to what she says. What happens on the fourth day? He stinketh. We're going to talk about that next week. He stinketh how? He's turned to your name real quick. Say, neighbor, is your stuff stinking by now? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, yeah. I know some of y'all are uncomfortable. Like, no, he didn't. Yes, he did. Yeah. <laughs> We, we, we're going to come, we're going to come, we're going to come to that. So, 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 so lock into this. So, so four days later, when all hopes was gone, Jesus shows up such that his presence would dictate that what I'm about to do, there would be no doubt in any mind that I'm the one who did it. And I want y'all to lock into this because God is on his time such that when he shows up and it happens, there is never any doubt that I wish I had somebody in here that he did it. So he's always on. He's always on his time. Now, now, now what I like about what I like about that first few verses, verse 17, 18 and 19, is the parenthetic where the author gives us even more data. Listen to what it says. Bethany was close to Jerusalem. You guys are tracking with me? Y'all see that in there? Look at it, look at it. It says what in verse, in verse 18, Bethany was near Jerusalem, and it tells you how far. And then look at verse 19. And because of the near proximity of Bethany to Jerusalem, here's what verse 19 says. Many of the Jews who had come to Martha and Mary to console them, they came from Bethany. You kind of get what I'm saying? Verse 18, Bethany was near Jerusalem, off about two miles, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. Now, the reason I want to point this out real quick, you remember with me last week, here was the tension. Lord, are you going to go back to Jerusalem so the Jews can kill you? (laughs) That was the thing, right? And he says, there's only 12 hours in day, you must only work when it's night, I mean day, for when night comes, you can't do any work, okay? And so here's how I hinted at this last week. Martha, Mary, and Lazarus has some level of prominence such that the author gives the author gives us detail that because of the near proximity, about 1.7 miles to be exact, um, they said about 300 stadium is, is the, the Greek term that's used, um, that a lot of people knew these individuals. And so let me, this is at the risk of, I, I, I'm not saying that the text is this, a whole lot of folks showed up. Okay, now. I'm the guy that's going to say to you, these were some of the very same people who wanted to stone Jesus. Okay? So, so what the author is saying, hey, Jesus, when you show up, a lot of the people who doubted you, a lot of the people who tried to kill you, a lot of the people who want to stone you, 
It's going to be there. So when you do what you do, sure enough, your deity is going to be realized. Now, now let me, y'all need to hear me. I say this a lot. Now. I need to say it right now. A lot of us are going through a death situation, and I'm jumping ahead into next week, and we're embarrassed about the death situation because we don't want the crowds to know about it. And the reason Jesus is delaying his appearance, because he wants everybody to see. <laughs> he, 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 want, he wants the crowd to be there so that when he show up, that, that everybody, because remember, it's not about you, it's about God. I wish I had somebody. It's about God being glorified. And the reason we are avoiding the crowd, because it's about us and not what God wants to do through us. Forget you, forget me. It's not about me. It's about him. So he's always on. Yeah, come on. He's always on what? Say it again. He's always on what? Now, so, so here's the thing, what I said to you. Time bears no factor. So four days later, and I'm using metaphors, four days later, when all hope is gone, when I've given up, when you've given up, let me say this, and I hope you don't miss this. When we've changed prayer subject, <sighs> let, me, let me do this. All right, y'all, we're going to fast for four days. No, no, no. We're going to push it. Pray until something happens. So if nothing happens in 30 days, we'll stop. Then on day 31, Jesus shows up. Dumb us. You ain't supposed to show up 31 days. You're supposed to show up on the, between that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now that you came on the 31st days, it don't matter no more. Because we're stopped praying. Don't act like you haven't given up on something that happened outside the time frame of your expectation. Oh, come on, talk to me this morning. Talk to me this morning. Are you hearing me? Okay. So time bears no factor. Now, notice, notice the second thing here that I want y'all to get. Location bears no factor on his ability to bring life to our dead situation. Number one, say time bears no factor. Bears no factor. Say location bears no factor. Bears no factor. He's still God. Now let me read, let me read, let me read, let me read. Look at verse 20, okay? And then we're going to walk through this because this is the, the, the gist of what I want you all to take away, and then we're going to walk through this. Verse 20 says, So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Verse 21, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, she said, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Keep your finger there. Jump over to verse 28. Look at verse 28. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary, saying in private, the teacher is here and is calling you. And when she heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. And when the Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her, supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. But look at verse 32. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been where? Come on, if you had been where? Location. My brother would not have died. Now, we don't have time, and we'll do this Wednesday, we could have gone over to Luke chapter 10, verse 38, and would have, I would have painted a picture in those sets of verses of these same two sisters with Jesus going to their home to visit, and the scenario was when he got there, the text pointedly says that Martha, let me quote King James, was cumbered about with much serving. She was busy. She was in the kitchen cooking. She was cleaning. She was making preparation. But it says, but Martha sat still 
at his feet, right? And so I believe John is playing off of that passage, and he's showing the character traits of these two sisters. Now, here it is. Jesus shows up, and he's not yet at the place where Lazarus has buried. If you read the text carefully and look at verse 18 and 19, I believe at the time when Mary, Martha went to meet him, he was still in Jerusalem. I want you all to hear me say this, okay? And and so she goes the 1.7 miles to where Jesus is and lock into this. She gives him a piece of her mind. Oh, don't act like you hadn't done that. You see, if you read the text through spiritual lens, you'll miss the nuance of what I really want to communicate this morning because here's what she said. I fed you, and and I want to put Martha in the same boat because when Martha got there, when she got done giving him a piece of her mind, here's what she did. She went to Mary and said, Mary, he's shown up. Are you going to do it or not? Let me help you say why I'm saying that, because I'm willing to guarantee you they sent message when he was sick, not after he died. And and they knew, sure enough, he's going to show up. Come on. That's our boy. That's family. We fed him. We clothed him. We put him to sleep in our house. We gave him a place to rest. Come on. We killed a fatted calf just for him. You mean to tell me that our brother is sick and he's got the nerve not to show up? The moment I see him, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. And Mary was like, yeah, I'm going to do it too. Yeah, who's going to do it first? It doesn't matter, but, but we both going to tell him. So lock into this. Man, Martha runs out because of her character trait. Some of us got that funky character (laughs) that we respond out of emotion. Mary's like, let me pray a little bit before I say this. Some of us just say it. And so Martha goes out and hear me, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And they go into this discord. Yeah, but now that you're here, whatever, you know. And she goes back to Mary And notice the text, privately. Are you going to do it? You better stand up. Girl, I gave him peace of my mind. I told him where to go. I told because ain't nobody going to hurt me like that ever again. I'd have paid rent for that man four months, and he gonna leave me with four children. You think, oh, oh no, oh, oh, uh, 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 ain't, ain't, ain't nobody, nobody. Girl, you better go tell him. You sure, Martha? I'm telling you, because if you don't do it, he gonna come here for food next week, and you gonna feed him. I ain't going in no kitchen. Mm -mm, Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. He should have been there. And, 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 so, and so Mary gets up, and she goes, and she says to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother, she was a little nicer about it. She was the wimp. But she said the same thing. Now, as humorous as that may seem, the tension in the text is this. These were people who hung out with Jesus, who lived life with Jesus, yet and still their knowledge of Jesus' ability was restricted to a location. Here's what they said. Had you been here, and the problem with them saying had you been here is they're communicating several things. Number one, they're saying, we've seen you heal sick people. But I don't know that you have ability and power to raise dead folk. So had you intervened while we were praying, I wish I had somebody in here. (laughs) Had you intervened while we were seeking your face? Matter of fact, matter of fact, Jesus, 
Culture graced you in that even after he had dead, died, you had a three-day window to show up. But now the Spirit's gone on, so what's the point of you showing up now? We're done praying. So here's this. Lord, had you shown up when Lazarus was sick or at the very onset of his dead, his death, you had a chance to raise him up. But now that he's dead and gone, it don't matter anymore. And what's the point? I need y'all to hear me say this because a lot of us are living life today in this it doesn't matter anymore stage because we have moved past the situation and Jesus has not even shown up. Yeah. So here's what it looks like. We have jacked up relationships now because I'm done with you because he should have showed up before you hurt me. When I was praying for you to stop, I can't stand you even though we're divorced and done right now because he should have showed up when I was praying for the marriage. I want somebody to hear me this morning. I lost my mama who died and he should have shown up when mama was sick. And, and now that mama has died and gone on, I'm mad with him. I don't want to have nothing to do with him because it don't matter no more because she's dead and gone. I want y'all to hear me. He should have showed up when I was praying about the job because I had a bad review and a bad rating and I know I was about to lose my job and I prayed, Lord, save me and he didn't show up. So now it don't matter no more. I can't stand none of them folk at work and and we walk around with bad attitudes because we act as if God could only work in the moment. Hear me, church. He is on his time, and he will show up after the fact a lot of times to show us who really God is. And here's the tough part in him showing up after the fact. We have this, it doesn't matter, I don't care attitude. And we close our ears from hearing him. And we walk around with tainted relationships, with attitudes, with mindsets, with all kinds of stuff as if God cannot still work. Remember, it's not about you, but it's about him being what? Come on, is this making sense? Are you hearing me this morning? It's about him being glorified. So here's what these sisters says. Lord, if you had been here, Lazarus would not have died. And a lot of us in Christendom are saying, if you had showed up, God, I'd have still been friend with that old preacher. I would have still been friends with Jane. I would have still been friends with whatever. I would have still been friends, but because you didn't come when I wanted you to. <laughs> it don't matter no more. And a lot of us are living a sad Christian life in a it doesn't matter anymore state. And what we're doing is we've closed the door to Jesus showing up and he's standing at the door knocking and we can't let him in because we've shut the doors. Or don't act like there's not any person you're not mad with right now. Don't act like there's somebody you can't stand, somebody who hurt you deeply that you haven't spoken to in years. Come on, talk to me this morning. Don't act like there's not a situation because you've released it because you said to God, you should have showed up when I need you to. Now I'm moving on. Now it don't matter no more. And we've gone on with our little spiritual lives, being happy-go-lucky Christians, fooling ourselves into thinking we have a good relationship with God on the inside when he's still on the outside knocking, trying to come in. <sighs> I'm done. Here's what he said. Look at the text. 
Look at the text. And, and let, me, let me hit this last thing. I want you all to get this, okay? Look at what it says. Jesus is what? And the what? God is glorified when we recognize that Jesus has the resurrection and the life. So look at this. Look at this. Go back to verse 23. Jesus said to her, your brother will live when? This is us. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Now, here, here's what we say. Yeah, I, it's going, I can fix it. It's too late. It's already dead. You're missing the point. If it was about that thing, I'd have showed up and fixed it then. But by virtue of the fact that you're alive and I am resurrection and life, I've showed up to do something in, yeah, in you. If I wanted to fix them, I'd have fixed them. Are you with me? But when I show up, come on, the moment and, and, and the movement and the mission, it's about you. So listen to what he says. Listen to what he says. Uh, and Mar Martha kind of surfaced this thing. I know that at the end time, this is the eschatology. When you come back for your church, we all going to rise. And there's a whole lot of stuff there where the Pharisees believed in the resurrection and the Sadducees didn't. So yeah, 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 Jesus, yeah, I know, but Lazarus is gone. He left me with five kids. That's over with. I'm broke. I'm in a homeless shelter. What's the point? And we've stopped living. And Jesus shows up and he says, verse 24, Martha said, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he what? Live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall what? Never die. And listen to what she says. Do you believe this? And she had the nerve. Yes, Lord. But I just went off on you. And I'm going to do it again if you, if you hurt me like that again. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, who is coming into the Word. Go to verse 25. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the what? Life. Listen to this real quick. And, and, and I, I got to stay calm when I say this because it's some good stuff. When God encountered Moses in the burning bush, Moses said to him, Hey God, whom shall I say sent me? Or which God shall I say you are? Here's God's response. I am that I am. In other words, I can be whatever you need me to be, Moses, at the time that you need me to be it. Because I am the ever-present tense of God. I am always becoming what you need. You can't box me in. You can't lock me. I want you to hear me. So in the Greek, he uses the same Hebrew term, ego, a me. In other words, listen, Martha, I am that I am. And by virtue of the fact that I am here, whatever I say can happen is about to happen because I am a present tense God. I am a future God. And listen to this. I am the God of the living and I am also the God of the dead. I transcend time. I am omnipresent. I transcend location. And if you understand who I am, I didn't need to be there for Lazarus to live. I could have spoken a word from wherever I was, and Lazarus would have gotten up anywhere, I want you to see this is about me. People, our attitude with God will change if we recognize it's about God and not about us. When he shows up, he can take your dead situation and turn it into life. The reason a lot of us cannot enjoy life interpersonally and with relationships with others, be it our parents, be it our mom, be it our dad, be it an ex-loved one, be it a brother or sister, a co-worker, is because we say you should have shown up when I needed you the most, now I'm past it, what's the point? And he's saying, I show up not to fix that, but to give life to you. Because I am 
the resurrection and the life. I am that I am. And things that were dead, you, <laughs> I can bring life. That's why in one instance when he said to this man, come follow me, he said, my daddy died. I got to go bury my dad. Here's what he said, let the dead bury the dead but you come follow me. And a lot of us are living in our yesteryear, let me get to the end of the text, bound up. And Jesus has come to call me and to call you out of the tombs. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me. This is not just a salvifical statement, meaning... It's not only about me giving my life to Christ and making it into heaven. It's about me living life in the here and now. So when I say to you, by way of big idea, Jesus is the resurrection and the life, and God is glorified. We, when we recognize the truth that he is the resurrection and the life, can't nobody get on your reserved nerve if you know who God really is. And let me go here. This is the the spiritual maturity part. If we've gotten people in our lives that still work our reserved nerve, then we really don't know who. Yeah, 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 because he is life. Are you hearing me? And this is what we do. This is what we do. We have the Mary and Martha mindset. We shut each other out interpersonally. Eric King will never hurt me again. Bam, 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 shut the door, two snaps around the world and back. (laughs) And we're done with him. And we kill him. Here's what we're doing when we kill him. We bury God with him because we too are saying, Lord, if you had been here, I wouldn't have the problem I have with him right now. And so when he shows up, too late. He's in my book of never to remember anymore. And God's in the same book with him because we act as if he can't fix it now. Transcends time. Transcends location. Are you hearing me? Because he is the resurrection and he is the life. Here's the depth of this. It doesn't matter how long ago it happened. It doesn't matter where you were when it happened. He can fix it now. He can fix it now. Before we even moved to the resurrection, because here's what this might look like next week. You might have to take a trip to the graveyard to move the stone. Worship team, come. Lord, you are the resurrection and the life. On a spiritual plane, God, you can fix marriages. You can fix interpersonal relationships. You can fix churches. And a lot of times, it's not about the literal raising of the dead. But in a sense, God, it's the raising of the dead that are yet living. For stopping praying because you didn't show up when we wanted you to. And so here's what we said. You should have been here. And we chalk it up to must not have been your will. And we move on. Wow. Wow. Forgive us, God, for that man, woman, boy, and girl that are here this morning, been living in pain, wounds of the past, can't let go, can't release, can't forgive, can't enjoy life more abundantly. Because all they can say is, where was God when I needed him? He should have been there. And we forget the omnipresence of God that you're everywhere and at the same time. We forget the omniscience of God that you know everything. 
We forget the sovereignty of God. If there's one here that's hurt, bring them God for healing. If there's one that's in a broken relationship, bring them, Lord, for healing. If there's one that has not given their life to you, bring them, Lord, for salvation. You have come that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. So as we study this passage of Scripture, this pericope, this story that's in front of us, and we look at you raising a dead man, before we can get to the dead man, we learn so much from the relationships you had with his sisters that we're seeing ourselves in the text. Forgive me for having an attitude with you. You should have been there. You were there all the time. It was just your time, not mine. So Holy Spirit, move in this place, God. Move in this place. Move in this place. As we give our heart and our time to you. Bless and have your way, God. In your name we pray.